So let's go ahead now and take a look at our um, next step in this process. And we'll say that here it says all calculations should be performed on the server side. So that means we're going to have to go probably into the roots directory to get the code that's on the server side rather than the code that's in the... So we'll look in the roots and the views directory rather than in the public directory. And the roots directory will have our JavaScript and the views will have our pug and the pug will produce HTML. Now it says here that The values returned from the server should be a simple JavaScript literal, that's JSON, okay, that contains at memory a property called result that contains the result of the calculation. For instance, our, okay, so let's pretend I was asking you to call a method, an endpoint called get9, whose purpose is to return the number 9. So here we would define a route on the get HTTP get method that defines the get9 route. So if that happens, then we should send back a response. We should send back a response back to the browser with a key of result in double quotes and a value, which in this case is a number 9. So this is JSON. This thing here is JSON. And you can think of JSON simply as a JavaScript object literal with the keys in double quotes and no methods. So if you want to have it formalized for you, here's a JSON spec by Douglas Crockford, the guy who actually created JSON. And it's very short, as you can see. So there's the whole spec for you. It's very simple to write JSON, and that's why we don't spend much time on it. He likes to use these kind of railroad diagrams. So you've got a thing that looks like an object, starts with our object syntax, the curly brace. Then we've got a string, that's our key. And we've got a colon, and we've got a value. So key value pairs separated by a colon, and each key value pair is separated from the next key value pair by a comma. And so, and that's all inside of an object. And then the value is an array, is an ordered collection of values. So an array begins with a left bracket and ends with a, so we could have an array of values. An array is an ordered collection of values. The array begins with the array symbol, the square bracket, and ends with the square bracket. Values is separated by commas. So we could have a series of objects inside an array. And then he defines what values are, and he says they could be strings, numbers, objects, array, true, false, and null. Here he defines what a string is, and he shows, you know, the double quotes, which is part of the JSON spec and then he gets into some more detail and then he defines what a number is which can be a value between 1 and 9 and with some other fancy stuff in there depending if you want to do some other things with the numbers. So that's the spec, it's very simple. And then I also show you a way to convert an object literal, so here's some JSON to convert a JSON object into an object literal. You use object called JSON which is just global it's always there and you call the parse method of it and this would be converted into a um, JavaScript object literal or conversely you can take the object literal such as this you can see it's not in double quotes the the key values are not in double quotes and so you know right away it's not JSON this is just an object literal and then we're going to convert it into JSON, which would look like this string with the things wrapped around it. And here you can see that we call JSON stringify. So you got two different methods here of the JSON object, one called parse and one called stringify. Okay. And then we've got this method 
that gives us an example of how to call this stuff. And we're going to put it in, it tells us that it would like us to put that thing in routes index.js. So we'll come over here and we'll find the routes directory and we'll find the index file and we'll stick it in there. And it says put it in there right before the export statement. So here's the export statement and we stuck it in right before it. And then just to be clear, we go reformat code and make sure everything's sorted out the way we like it to be. And then now we'll go ahead and try it. We're going to actually hit a kind of a glitch here. Right now, our code still does what we expect it to do, but we're going to try and call our get9 route. And to call a route, you can, this isn't the way we'll do it ultimately, but you can simply specify it as a URL and call it. Oh, and look, it comes back and gives us our result that we wanted, result 9. So forgive me for thinking we were going to hit a glitch there. Clearly, we did not. And so it worked, right? It returned back the object that we asked it to return. And um, all is good. Our life is, is pretty happy here considering um, what happened. Um, I think that let's try going after something that doesn't exist, like get nines. And so if we made an error and we tried to call a route that didn't exist. If you look inside our index.js file, we've got a get nine, but we don't have a get nines, so it failed. So, and then we started getting not only a not found error, which says that it couldn't find something called get nine, so we're back to Obamacare 404, right? Cannot find, and can't find get nines. Here's this specific statement. Plus, we got this special error, error here, cannot set property on click of null. And we go, well, wait a minute, but that was working for us just a second ago. Why did it stop working? And the problem is that suddenly it tried to load that page and on click ends up being of null because get element by ID of search on this page comes up with nothing because we define search in index.pug, but here we're not getting the home page, we're just getting some weird 404 not found page, which if you want to really have TMI, you can come over here to app.js and scroll down and find your error handlers and here's where the error handlers get generated. Here's the 404 error. error. So that's how um, that 404 error got generated was right here. But you don't really, you, you ultimately you need to know that, but you don't need to know it right now. But at any rate, we're unhappy that it blew up in this way. So we're going to try and fix that. And we're going to go to control JS and stop being so fancy. And so instead of saying, on click like this, we're going to say let's create, let's assign whatever value we got from our search for the button with a search ID onto it to the search button variable and then let's test it. If search button then search button on click and again we reformat our code to make sure everything looks pretty and now that should um, help some not a lot but some so now when we do this here, we don't get the error anymore. We still get the 404 not found, but we don't get the, we couldn't find search button. We couldn't find an element with search on it because now we check before we try to assign anything to it. So we don't get can't find on click of null because search button is null, but we already checked for that case. 
But, of course, there's still no get nines. So we can fix that by going back and now we're getting the result we expect. Okay. There's a lot of information right there. Um, all I can tell you is this is crucial. We haven't talked a lot about this, so let me add this on. Notice that the route here is the home page. It's slash, the default page, in which case we render index.js, right? We end render index.pug. But we also said, let's define a get9 route, in which case we render, we send this back to it. Story's still only partly told, but some of it should start to be coming into focus for you now. And remember, of course, remember all of this is being done. Oh, all of this is being done via this trip, this journey, right? From the client, across the internet, then it reaches then two upper it finds the machine where the server runs it goes up through the data link lever layer and it comes up to http and it goes to the server It's not quite right, is it? This is an old diagram. All right, we're going to live with that for now. Um, and then that's all I wanted to say at this point. Thanks.